Hello class and welcome back to my channel. This is Teacher Eman and now we're going to talk about uh, Unit 2 or the Lesson 2 for Trends, Network, and Critical Thinking in the 21st Century. This is for Senior High School Grade 11. So our topic is about understanding local networks. Included here is the strategic analysis and the intuitive thinking. So before anything else, please don't forget to like and also subscribe if you are new to my channel and also click the notification bell. For introduction, every time na narinig natin yung mga networks, hindi mo awala yung also yung word na linkages. Okay, so for introduction, the school can enjoy linkages and networking activities with international, national, and local organizations in the community for mutual benefits and assistance needed. Linkages and networking are different in the degree of commitment by the partners. In linkage, the relationship between partner organizations is quite loose. While in networking, it is much stronger usually because the group and agencies have common objectives and beneficiaries. Networking is basically extending the outreach of the resources in different ways so as to increase the effectiveness of the program. Okay, what is network? A relationship structure wherein the members of the networks are able to share resources with one another. A network is com composed of several institutions, consortium, of several colleges of different universities that bind together for a common goal. This is for schools. So they work together to attain common objectives, undertake innovati innovative process practices, and update members regarding breakthrough in different disciplines. We have five different kinds of networks. We have the human network, the knowledge network, computer network, trade network, and ecological network, but we're going to focus only with human network. Okay, so what is linkages naman? It intends to serve members of both sides according to their respective needs, interests, and objectives. Ibig sabihin, give and take, hindi isa lang nakikinabang. It creates bonds together to solicit support and assistance for purposeful activities. Kaya nga minsan, di ba, in school, may mga network and linkages na department para kahit graduate ka na, may connection ka pa rin sa school. We have national and local linkages. It is established between universities and colleges offering identical degrees in which cross-enrollments for subjects needed for graduation is also allowed. Kaya nga, pag nagka-college ka, for example, uh, sa dati ko school, nagpalit sila ng curriculum. So there are subjects na kapag inabuta ka na lumang curriculum, hindi na available sa school. So ang gagawin mo, magka-cross-enroll ka sa ibang school. Okay, it is also a joint resource, uh, researches that could be conducted by two or three universities depending on the field of expertise. Okay, this is an example of a graphical representation of what a linkage is. So, this could be a university, a company, or even a person. As you can see, A and B, C and D. As you can see, with A and B, a, pwede may may ibigay kay B, ganun din si B, pwede may may ibigay sa A, kay A. So, it's a give and take, ganun din kay C, and also kay D. But, in network, kung makita nyo, A, B, C, and D is now connected. Unlike kanina, yung linkages lang dalawa. But, this time, with network, yung apat na yan, may connection na sa isa't isa. So, lahat sila magbe-benefit sa, sa isa't isa. Hindi lang isa magbe-benefit sa isa. With this naman, networks can be considered as linkages if they link one network to another, creating a bigger network. Kung may kita nyo, sobrang complicated na, pero maganda dyan, marami makikinabang. Diba? Marami kang mapapakinabangan din kasi ang network mo is may link na sa iba pang network. Now, we have the three categories, categories of social network. We have the family, peers, and the contacts. Family, the first peer of our social network, the first group of individuals with whom we establish social relations. They ensure our survival after we are born. So, ito nga yung pinakaunang uh, 
social uh, interaction natin kapag pinanganak tayo kasi sila ang unang-una natin makikilala at makakasama. Habang tumatagal at tumatanda tayo, makikilala natin ang ating mga peers. So when we met them, uh, we met them through our family, like family friends, acquaintances, or even siblings, yung mga kaibigan ng mga kapatid natin and also mga kapitbahay natin. While others, we meet naman on our own. For example, pag nag-aral na tayo, we meet new classmates. Pag nag na tayo, we have new office mates. At kapag meron tayo mga ina-attend mga services, we also have new church mates and many more. So, these people provide help that are not provided by the family. And the last one is contacts. Ito nga yung important to ngayon, lalo na nagkaroon ng quarantine, di ba? So, provide things na neither our family nor friends can provide. So, for example, dito, delivery boy. For example, yung mga Lazada, Food Panda. Ayan, important yan sa atin, yung mga tindera. And also, ito, katulad ako, teacher. Kasi nga, we are contacts na hindi naman kayo provide ng mga magulang mo. Although ngayon, because of quarantine, may mga, ano, ng mga uh, module na lang, magulang ang nagsisilbing teacher. Pero iba pa rin talaga po may sarili kang t- pag may teacher ka face-to-face. And doctors, security guard, policemen, at kung sino sino pa. Okay, for family, we have family relations based on the family code of the Philippines. O sino sino ito ang tinatawag natin na fam- family or pamilya. Okay, the first one, we have the husband and the wife, yung mag-asawa. And then, we have the relationship between the parents and also the children. The next We have the descendants and the ascendants. Pag descendants, syempre, pababa na yan. Magbula, mag, uh, magulang, tapos yung magulang nagkaroon ng anak, tapos yung anak nagkaroon pa ng anak, which is apo na, tapos pababa na pababa. Ascendants, pataas naman. So, ang last naman dito, yung number four, is among brothers and sisters, full or half-blood. Okay, rules to remember on family relationships. This is based on the family code. Okay, number one, family relations exist among the relatives aforementioned even if they are not living together. So kahit na himiwalay na isang kapamilya mo, they are still considered your family. For example, isa pumunta sa ibang bansa o kaya nag-asawa na himiwalay na sa inyo, kahit wala na sila sa bahay nyo, they are still considered family. Other relatives like cousins, nephews, nieces, and domestic helpers who grew up and are living together with the family members of the household, member siya ng household, pero hindi naman siya member ng family mo. Kasi may sarili naman silang family. Di ba? Kaya kapag may mga yaya ka, may katulong, part of the household but not your family. Pinsan mo nakitira sa inyo, sa inyo lumaki, they are part of your household but they are not your family. Relatives. Number three, illegitimate children are not included in the family relations because they have their own family. Di ba yung mga ano, illegitimate child, mga anak sa labas? May sarili pa rin silang magulang. So, uh, maaari isa sa magulang nila, magulang mo, pero meron pa rin silang sarili yung pamilya nila. Adopted children are part of the family. Okay, so pag may inadapt, Basta legal adoption, those, uh, those people will be part of your family. Nephews, nieces, uncle and aunts are not included kasi meron din silang sariling pamilya. And then number six, relatives mentioned in the article include those of husbands and wives. But, sabi dito, the notion or idea may include a lot more daw what is stipulated in the law kasi ngayon medyo nagbabago na idea na families. Kung may kita nyo dito, pets as part of the family, even pag may alaga ka, aso, di ba tinatawag nyo na fur babies, nagiging na siyang part ng pamilya. Iba na kasi ngayon ang idea na family, although sa batas, yung mga kanina sinabi ko, pero ngayon ito yung nagiging idea natin na family natin. Next, best friend. Daging best friend natin, minsan parang kapamilya na ang turing ng mga magulang natin sa kanila. And even workplaces, colleagues, communities, church, school, etc. is also your, considered as your family kasi nga lagi kayo magkakasama. Kaya parang pamilya na rin ang tarung, turingan ninyo sa isa't isa. Okay, strategic analysis. 
For strategic analysis, pag-usapan natin dalawa muna ang ano, definition. One is strategy and the other one is analysis. Strategy comes from the Greek word strategia, meaning skills possessed by generals and are necessary to win battles. Analysis is a careful study of each part of a whole and understanding how each part and their relationship with each other result in the world. Kaya kapag pinagsama natin siya, we have strategic analysis. It involves examination and evaluation of strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, threats, environments, and resources with the purpose of drawing up a strategy from the results of the analysis to achieve certain goals over time. It uses logic. Kaya kung makikita nyo, itong strategic analysis, whenever you're going to do something, magdideside kayo ng mga bagay-bagay, kailangan pinag-iisipan nyo. Kaya, matagal tong ginagawa kasi for planning for example gagawa kayo ng mga activities projects dapat pinag-iisipan may strategic analysis kayo even presentation nga ng mga project dapat meron din ito in connection to strategic analysis ipasok natin itong SWOT analysis kasi meron naman na, na discuss doon sa definition ng strategic analysis about SWOT what is SWOT analysis It is an incredibly simple yet powerful tool to help you develop your strategy. SWOT stands for two four words. So one is strength, weaknesses, opportunities, and also the threats. Ito ang itsura niya. So gagawa kayo ng box, tapos apat siya. So dapat nasa upper left ang strength, katabi niya is weaknesses, sa baba ng strength is opportunities, and then threats. Dito yung ililista yung mga nakikita nyo dapat na bagay na para mag, uh, makagawa kayo ng analysis nyo or strategic analysis nyo. Sa strengths and weaknesses, this is internal things. Ito yung meron dapat kayong control o pwede nyo baguhin tukos sa sarili nyo or kung ano man yung gagawin yung project or business. For opportunities and strength na, uh, threats naman, this is something external or outside. Medyo mahirap siyang baguhin pero pwede nyo siyang gawa ng advantage and opportunities para maayos siya at dapat uh, protektahan nyo naman ang inyong sarili about the threats. Okay, let's now now to intuitive thinking. This is kind of thinking that helps you understand reality in the moment without logic or analysis. There's no language involved in it either. It's entirely about signs and sensation. Most of the time, it goes against whatever we might think of as rational. It is more of familiarity and experience. Kaya kung makikita nyo, intuitive thinking, it's very kabaliktaran ng strategic analysis. Kasi intuitive thinking, ginagamitan mo ito ng intuition. So, ano yung intuition? It is a form of knowledge that appears in consciousness without obvious deliberation. Ibig sabihin, bigla na siya pumapasok sa inyo, napapaisip na lang kung ano, tapos hindi mo na siya masyado pinag-iisipan, gumagamit ka dito ng hunches or in Tagalog, kutob. These are generally the unco- by the unconscious mind rapidly uh, sifting through past experience and cumulative knowledge. Not a result of process of analysis and deliberation, but that of a quick reflexive thinking to give immediate response. Ibig sabihin, mabilis ang sagot. Yung iba dyan, based on experience, magbibigay ka na ganyan yung mga suggestion, comments, ganyan. Kasi nga, intuition, sabi nga natin dito, hindi na pinag-iisipan, bigla-bigla na lang pumapasok sa utak natin. Okay, so ayun na pinagkaiba na strategic analysis and also intuitive thinking. So that's it for my video. So if you like my video, please give it a thumbs up, like my video, and also subscribe to my channel kung bago lang kayo. And also hit the notification bell. And I will see you again on my next video.